Anyways. Anyway. Let's start. Okay. Is there anything else we got to talk about before? Oh, uh, you want to share? About the uh, other yeah, let's night. talk about this Friday night thing because I think that was impactful. And so we got to invite. We were invited to this worship little time with uh, Luke and Crystal from the other vineyard and some of their people in. But it was mostly uh, Stan and his wife, Kat. What's her name? Cindy. Cindy. So from, they're basically from Unbridled, Unbridled, the Saint Cloud, the people that purchased Saint Cloud, and they bought the annex now as well, and they're opening up a restaurant below the annex coming up in April. Yeah. And so he showed us that property. That's where we met. We met up there, and he's remodeled, and it's really nice. And uh, but they are all on fire for the Holy Spirit and for the Lord to do a revival in our town. And so they had these people coming in from. They live outside of Canyon City. They. Mm -hmm you know, Parker and Denver. So their, their staff was coming in mm -hmm. and some of them were getting visions and hearing about Canyon City from the Lord. The, this lady, she drove by the prisons coming in and she said she saw revival breaking mm -hmm. out in the prisons. Mm -hmm. uh, they saw, there's like a word of prophecy over St. Cloud, all this that's going to happen. And so there's just much hope. Yeah. I want you to know that there's, and, and to think about mm -hmm. people from outside of town caring about Canyon City and seeing things of life for it, it was really encouraging. Yeah, like yeah. they really are hearing the word transformation for our community. And, you know, they're obviously investing in property and trying to just bring transformation uh, through through the different businesses and, and things that they're bringing. So it, it, even when, you know, a pandemic is shutting things down all over the world, you know, there's people that are sowing seeds and there's people, you know, pressing in and saying, uh-uh, God's, God's doing stuff during this season and we're going to press into it and we're going to, you know, we're going to start things and we're going to look to see where God's hand is and, pre and, and put our hand to it. Yeah. So it was really a powerful time. It ended up being, you know, just kind of this big worship circle and, and some of their folks... Uh, uh, that are worshipers and and just us pressing into the Lord and trying to hear from the Lord and then ministering uh, uh, to them specifically, feeling like you know uh, this is a hard time to to like really uh, uh, claim new ground for God's I think it's kingdom. Been hard for them because it's going slower than they had hoped. Yeah, you know all these things. So, yeah. but it's you know they had some real encouraging words for them. Yeah, and uh, you know sometimes it's the slow work of God. Right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we're going to talk about that uh, today in some but of the, this. And then, too, I think there was just an encouragement, it, you know, because a, a lot of people don't know this. Like, you know, we do connect with other churches our, in our community. We do partner with Ministerial Alliance. We do partner with the other vineyards. We partner with the whole area of vineyard churches. And, and so there is unity, even though people may not see it. It, it does happen. Like we get together yeah. and, you know, have lunch and, you know, we get together and pray, we get together and worship. And this was just one of those times we really felt the Lord needed a, a united body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, more than ever, I mean, the, the, the enemy is trying to bring division in any way he can against just the body of Christ. And, and more than ever, we have to just stand as the body of Christ. There's so many things that, you know, that, that we agree on, we'd still, Jesus is still on the throne. And, uh, and, and so that's where uh, we need to focus on the things that unite us. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Do you have anything else on that? Or I, I've seen different communities and I've seen studies on them and, and reports and documentaries where the pastors came together in like a ministerial alliance and they, uh, they forgave each other and ministered to each other. And mm -hmm. there was a problem in this one town of meth addiction was really bad and people were dying and the city came together and the churches came together and they had a rally and they marched mm -hmm. through the city and they brought in like this campaign lady mm -hmm. and, and really that city became a city of God. Mm -hmm. People broke out and, and people were getting free from this addiction yeah. and they changed the name of the city to like Hope Manchester. Yeah. And, and so that can happen when there's that kind of unity mm -hmm. in that city. Yeah. But there's a lot of, you know, a lot of places right now that just need transformation. And that's what we're talking about this week is, is transformation again. And, you know, that God wants to bring transformation to, to our lives individually, to our cities, to our towns, to our country, uh, to our world. And it, it really mm -hmm. does start with us. Um, but as we were praying this week, we just felt like, like the Lord was, um, uh, you know, saying, you know, there's people that are just frustrated and tired and overwhelmed from all that's gone on. Angry, upset, uh, mm -hmm. kind of try, you know, filtering through just all the drama, all the stuff. And um, we just really felt like the Lord wants to bring 
transformation and breakthrough in, in uh, a restoration into those areas that people mm -hmm. have been you know, tired or frustrated. And I think it's been an emotional year, you know, with the election and riots and COVID and there's just all this frustration and maybe people are angry at God or angry at the government or angry mm. how things were handled. And, mm. and, and there's a lot of anger and, and emotion ties with that. Mm. And what happens is you just become wore out. And, mm. and I think what people are, mm. are wanting and needing now is just refreshment, just to surrender all that and yeah. let it go and, and reconnect with the Lord, you yeah. know. Yeah. So we're going to look at uh, a few scriptures today. We're going to share a few of our stories of transformation and, and uh, a story from scripture of transformation and then, uh, and then pray together. And that's what our day or that's what our morning looks like. So um, Romans 12, 2 is the first one we're going to look at. Uh, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good mm -hmm pleasing and perfect will. Yeah. And so here in this very sense, I mean, so many of us cling to this, like, like instead of kind of succumbing to what's going on in our world, we're called to be transformed regardless of what's going on in our world by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we do that? What are ways that we do that? Yeah. I heard Andrew Womack talk on this one time. He said, you know, you get off track with God and you you blew it and you sinned and you messed up. The best way to renew your mind and getting back is with the word. Get in the word and yeah. renew your mind. That's number one. Uh, there's mm -hmm. other ways, just hearing God's voice. We talked about that. There's many ways to hear God's voice uh, can be transforming. Mm -hmm. um, somebody could come into your life, speak a word to you. Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, could show up some way. So there's a lot of different ways that God can meet us and transform us. Yeah, through worship. Through, through prayer, worship. through hearing from God. You spoke about that last week. It just, yeah. you know, really being able to hear from God and how to, you know, ways and tools to do that. Yeah, God shows up, speaks audibly like he did to Saul and blew him off a horse. So that mm -hmm. can happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God's still able to blow mm -hmm. somebody right away. Yeah, so, so we do believe that one way that God brings transformation uh, is through life-changing moments. Mm -hmm. Like there are just times that, you know, I mean, besides just reading our Bibles or day to day or worshiping or prayer, or those kinds of things, that God can actually work mm -hmm. in, in uh, just a sentence or a moment or one experience or one encounter, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a secular place, uh, whether it's in a horrible place. I've heard incredible stories. Uh, one young man was telling me, uh, he had moved in with uh, some roommates and they were all, you know, he was pretty clean. I mean, he wasn't doing too many, just maybe a little bit of, of marijuana and some drinking, but like he moved in with these roommates and they were just, I mean, it was bad. And like it, 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 there was this moment where he said, he came into the room and you know, all the guys he's living with, they're all passed out and there's, beard and bottles and stuff like everywhere and he's like having to maneuver to just step over everything to get to the kitchen or something and that was like a life transforming <laughs> moment for him he's like i don't want to be like this mm -hmm. so for him that was like a life changing moment in this drug house really uh that he had and and has stepped step ended up stepping out of that and and you know really turning back to the faith. Sounds so. like he said, you know, this isn't my life. This isn't right? where I want to be. Right. I talked about the lady and showed the video of her, you know, Jesus saved her in a bar. She's just like, this isn't my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the Lord spoke to her. And she knew it. Yeah. And she, I didn't see, tell this part, but like she said, like the lights of the bar got brighter mm -hmm. and she knew she had to get out of there. Yeah. So the Lord could speak to us. That yeah. Way. In any way. So transformation that happens through life changing moments. So I'm going to share one of mine, um, uh, a life changing moment that I had in, in my life, which, you know, we all have many, there's, there's many times, but uh, obviously when we come to know Jesus is a life transforming moment for, for all of us. Uh, but you know, I was, uh, I kind of, uh, grew up not in the church. I didn't believe uh, that. I, I believed actually that the word was uh, a conspiracy theory um, and uh, uh, that church was just a joke and people that followed Jesus uh, I made fun of. 
Um, so that's kind of where I was coming from. And I was on just a path of really self-success and uh, moving up the corporate ladder and working in downtown Denver in high-rise high buildings. And uh, I think Terry the other day told me she used to be in the corporate world and she had to wear dresses and pantyhose every day. Like I was right there, except I did pantsuits. Oh my gosh, uh, at least they were in by, by the time I was doing that stuff because um, I did not want to wear hose. <laughs> Side, total side note, but I mean, you're with me, ladies. You're ladies, off. get this. <laughs> Guys, you don't get it, but it, just keep it, moving it's on. okay. I'm, yeah. so, I'm sorry. <laughs> ladies, you can really connect with me on this one. Um, so anyways, I'm moving up the corporate ladder. I mean, I was really all about success and title and money yeah. and, and that sort of thing. And that um, was attractive to me when I met Elise. She was just going after it. She was just yeah. going to rule the corporate world. And I was yeah. like, I'll just be on your shirt tails. Let's go, you know. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Well, anyways, I, I ended up going to a success conference. It, it, that was the name of the conference. It was all about, you know, how tools to, and how to equip you to be better in the corporate world and in your business life and that sort of thing but uh, little did I know there was a speaker there named Zig Ziglar, and uh, he is an incredible, you guys heard of Zig Ziglar? Yeah, incredible, um, you know, he was known for kind of his positive thinking, but he was a really a godly man and a big proponent of being a follower of Jesus and for others to be followers of Jesus. And uh, he actually spoke, I, I can't tell you, a single other speaker that day. Like there were famous people there and, you know, uh, uh, on the docket and like a vice president or, you know, I mean, they were like famous people. I can't tell you the name of one other person that was on the docket that day. Uh, and uh, Zig Ziglar spoke right before lunch and uh, he uh, spoke on tools on how to be better. I, I mean, on how to succeed in corporate life and how to uh, be more disciplined and uh, kind of get, uh, you know, climb up that corporate ladder. And uh, he said one thing, one sentence that I would say changed the trajectory of my entire life. And that one sentence was, if you've never read the Bible, it's the best-selling book of all time. That's all, he, that's all he said. And you should read it. And you should, you know, if you've never read it, you should read it. And, uh, you know, so here I'm coming from a place thinking this book is a joke, Right, and I've got this successful person telling me, you know, if you've not read it, you should read it. So it, it messed with me. It it totally messed with me, and I, to you know, it's like, okay, fine, fine. I've had people give this book to me. I've had people try and tell me to read it, you know, like, I, and and I'm like, okay, fine. I'll at least read it so I can be more, uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable and have in, in intellectual conversations with people that believe this stuff. Fine. I'm going to read it. So anyways, that started my journey to reading the Bible. And yeah. I read it all the way through. Uh, you started like in Genesis and started out. Yeah. yeah. And I don't recommend starting in we Genesis. We recommend starting at the uh, book of John. Yeah. yeah. The book of John is, <laughs> is great. Or Get the to Gospels. the Old Testament another time. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, that started a year journey of, okay, I'm reading the book. And it, it really did bring transformation to my life. And by the end, I remember the, uh, the day that I got on my knees and I, I followed a little card that, they, that, that Zig Ziglar had given that talked about how to give your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Step, you know, like all the steps were there. And so I just followed that to a T and I got on my knees and I gave my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I filled out the card and I mailed it in and they gave me a free gift or something, you know. <laughs> One of those kinds of things that sounds really hokey, but I did it. Yeah, and in, in your life changed. It was absolutely a life-changing moment because I would say I never would have met you. Yeah, Alicia has dating this guy. I wouldn't say he's a loser, but it sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she had to get rid of him, what she did. So when I met her, she had just, you yeah. know, three months or so before that, she had yeah. ended that relationship yeah. and she got a dog. Yes, I got a dog so I wouldn't go back to the guy because uh, he, he just wasn't, he wasn't good for me and he wasn't the one, you know, I, and I've been with him three years or whatever, yeah. it was a long time, but, but anyways, I would have never met you. We never would have had our kids. Yeah. You know, all of that. And now, you know, we've been married 24 years. I got a picture of that. If you guys want to uh, show our little cute yeah. picture of when we yeah. got married. Okay, all at once. Uh -huh. Aww, isn't that adorable? Aren't we cute? That to the reception. Yeah, and that was when Greg had a full head of black, <laughs> dark hair. <laughs> Almost a full head. He had a little receding, and I don't know. I just looked young, I, you know. Uh, but anyways, uh, we just celebrated, actually, our 24-year anniversary. 
anniversary. Four years. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that never would have happened out of that life-changing moment, right? So, so like, this is just the point. Like, God brings transformation out of, like, one moment of time that impacts not only one person's life, but a whole lineage and a whole, you know, generations to come, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. you, you've got a story. You want to share your story? Yeah, so I have, like, um, I have a combination of, moments that kind of stack up on each other, life-changing moments. So um, I give my life to Christ when I'm like 16 years old. And mm -hmm. not long after that, I'm at this conference my mom took us to. She would take us to these uh, evangelistic conferences. And so this one was in Longmont. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm loving it. And, and the preacher's passionate. And everybody's on fire for the Lord. And it's very Pentecostal and spits flying. And um, I'm like right in the front row and the, he, sp he points to me and he gives me this word of prophecy that I'm going to be in ministry and then I'm going to speak to thousands and that uh, to hold steadfast and make a standard in your life. And, uh, you know, I was just blown away. I just felt like at that moment uh, I was filled with the Holy Spirit during that. Everybody said I was like glowing. Mm. And uh, that was a life-changing moment for me. That mm. really set something deep in me of 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 being in ministry, I wanted that, you know, mm. after that moment, it was like, that's what I want, I want to be in ministry, and so that was this impactful moment, well, we fast forward about, uh, you know, 20 years, four well, years. when I was 20, when yeah. you were 20, yeah, yeah four right. years, soon, and uh, I had this uh, life-changing dream, this transforming dream I had before this, uh, had run from the Lord, and rededicated my life to him. And this, right after this rededication, I have this dream that I'm in this L-shaped room and I'm down here where it's dark and alone. But I could see this light coming from the, around the corner. So I get up and I go around the corner where there's this Bible study. There's these people in the light and they're mm. worshiping and they're mm. doing this Bible study. And I said, that's it, I, I need to be in the light. Mm. And the Lord also just gave me this uh, verse, Ephesians 4, 16. It showed up like you would just see like a sign almost mm. in my dream. So I looked it up and it says, from him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And for me, that was like, reminded me of this prophecy that, you know, I was going to be in ministry and, and each part does its work. I need to do my part. I need to get involved now. Mm. And I need to be with these people that can support me because I was living up in Dillon and I was just kind of a lone ranger trying to follow the Lord at this time. And so mm. I so needed the body of Christ. So it made mm. me move to where I knew these evangelists lived because I figured they would help me on this ministry journey. Mm. And so I moved 1,800 miles away to the backwoods in, uh, of Tennessee down in a hauler out in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had this trailer they let me stay at for free. And then I, I worked at, the, they had like a little uh, health food store mm -hmm. that I worked at. And so anyways, it, all these things were impactful, life-changing moments for me on a course that God had me on. And uh, I mentioned the slow work of God. It was the slow work of God before I really got into ministry. Yeah took a long time, but, really. But, but the life-changing, there were like two significant life-changing moments in this. One that you hear is somebody spoke a word to him, one word that, that set that in motion. Mm -hmm. And you didn't completely walk it out at that time. Right. Like, you know, didn't know how, didn't know, you know, have all the right steps and actually ended up kind of, you know, backtracking it just a little bit. But mm -hmm. then, you know, then the second one that, that really brought it to fruition was when, you know, you had this dream and the Lord gave you a dream, and yeah. that caused you actually to really move forward. Yeah, that was a powerful dream. It was just vivid. It was clear. It was in color, yeah. everything. Yeah, anybody, you guys get dreams? People get dreams in here? Yeah, I had a crazy one last night. <laughs> I am telling you. Yeah. Uh, but, but God speaks to us in dreams, and those uh -huh. can be you know, life-changing moments for you. Because obviously this dream caused him to move you yeah. know, uh, to totally move uh, out of where you were at and, yeah. and move to someplace else. So I would say that was a life-changing moment for you. Yeah. Yeah. So some encouragement from Alicia's story. Um, you know that the Lord showed up. And she's at a secular event. Here she went to this business conference, not even thinking about the Lord at all. 
and hear this one phrase, this man talks yeah. about the Bible, yeah. and it's, it changes her whole life. So maybe you have loved ones that are in secular environments or different things, that God can show up for those people. Pray that God would show up, mm -hmm. and they would hear a word. They would get that encouragement, or, or somehow the Lord would show up. Mm -hmm. Pray that they would have a dream like I had, a vivid dream yeah. that would transform their lives. Yeah, you know? that's right. Um, so there's all sorts of stories. You guys, as you were talking about our stories, you can, are you thinking like, oh yeah, I could tell you my life-changing moment story? Like you have some of those? Yeah, yeah. Come on, raise your hand. Show me, show me. Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, good. Um, so there's tons of life-changing moments uh, that we experience that God works in and through, and the Word also has some of those life-changing moments. And so we wanted to, we just picked actually one story. Uh, there were so many, but we wanted to just hone in on one that we're going to read and look at and kind of look at some different points of. Yeah. Um, so this is in uh, Acts 8, and we do have it on the screen. For those of you uh, watching online, you're going to have to... Don't uh, put it on yet, though. You're, you're I, uh, oh, we want to yeah, give an introduction. So Philip, he's not... There's a Philip who's an apostle, but this Philip is actually an evangelist. You read about him, he had four daughters who prophesied. Yeah. So this is a different Philip. And so he... So that's who he is. And then this Ethiopian... He's also called a eunuch. So just so you know, a eunuch was somebody that was in charge of usually palace. Uh, this guy's actually in charge of the princess's riches of the treasury. Mm -hmm. And so they may be in charge of like the, the women, the harem or the princesses of a palace. And so sometimes it's just a title. But if you're in charge of the princesses, you're actually castrated as a man. Yeah. So. <laughs> So let's move on. Let's now. move on from that. We're not going to go into that and all of that. You yeah, can, just, you can just study to clarify that, that. Study that one on your okay, own. Okay, let me read. Okay. <laughs> Verse 26, it said, Now an angel of the Lord said mm -hmm. to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes mm -hmm. down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his mm -hmm. way he met the Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandike, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, mm -hmm. reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So then Philip ran up to the chariot, heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. And do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. Mm -hmm. How can I, he asked, unless somebody explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and a lamb mm. before his shears is mm. silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Mm. So the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is this prophet talking about, himself or someone else? So then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good mm. news about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? Mm -hmm. And he gave orders for her to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Then they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again. Mm -hmm. But he went on his way rejoicing. And Philip, however, appeared at Zutos and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Mm -hmm. So amazing story uh, of transformation. Yeah, of some life-changing moments. So we yeah. wanted to bring out a few points from this. I mean, obviously, uh, the eunuch had an open heart. The eunuch was kind of seeking, right? And, and this, uh, I mean, he was seeking God, but maybe not sure who God was or what God that was and that sort of thing. So, you know, he was seeking, but not necessarily quite sure what he was seeking or who this person was that he was seeking. He didn't understand quite yet. And I think this parallels a lot to what we see today. Um, there are a lot of seekers. There are a lot of people that are seeking spiritual things and that are desiring spiritual things, but they don't exactly know how to do that or what that looks like. And so um, I, I really think there's a parallel to, to that with what we're experiencing today. And then secondly, you know, he was, he was trying to understand Scripture. Mm -hmm. And I put the word trying in there. I mean, he was, he was reading it. He was trying. But how many of you have tried to understand Scripture? And you're like, I don't get this at all. 
Right. You know, like this is Greek to me. I mean, I knowing that I started in the book of Genesis, when I started reading the Bible, I'm just like this, what on earth am I reading? But I just kind of bore down and like, I'm getting through this. But yeah. it, there's times where it's hard to understand. We need help. I've, I've had to ask, you know, people that I know is like, knows more about the scriptures than me to help me out. Right. Yeah, I've we, read commentary. I've prayed to God, show me what this means. Yeah. yeah. I've had some people, they come up, they like, hey, there's a scripture I don't understand. And they read it to me like it's some crazy Old Testament thing or something. And I'm like, whoa, yeah, I don't get that either. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's figure this out together. There's just some scripture that don't you know that there's scripture that it's like, yeah. we got to dig deeper into this. But I mean, I even think that parallels to what we're experiencing today because there are people that are really, there's, they want to know, especially with, you know, in this time of pandemic and all the election chaos and riots and that sort of thing. Like they're saying, hey, is this the end times? Is I think this, Revelation's is this... probably been read more than more, yeah. usual in this last year. Yeah, yeah. and people yeah. are saying, hey, I don't get this. And right. so we get the opportunity of saying, hey, let's, let, we can walk alongside you. Let's, we want to help mm -hmm. you understand this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then number three, you got He that was one. willing to have someone help him. You know, he humbled himself and admitted he didn't know. Here is this powerful man who was in charge of this treasury, just humbled himself. Said, I don't understand this. Can you come up here and help me read it? Mm -hmm. So that's a point for us to know is we got to sometimes humble ourselves and ask for that help. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was a life changing to, moment. I would say is yeah. he is just confession. Like, I don't get it. Would somebody yeah. help me? Right. At that right. moment then changed things yeah. changed because Philip right. explained it to him, right. yeah. was able to present the whole gospel to him. Yeah. And so this man came from a, a far away. I just wanted to show that slide of uh, Ethiopia. So yeah. that's uh, got yeah. a map of it. So you can see how far he traveled. He's just not, you know, he's in northern Africa there and he traveled this whole way to worship in Jerusalem. Yeah. And so sometimes we don't think Jerusalem was that big a deal back in that time. Obviously it was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was well known for yeah. all these people along that whole area to know about Jerusalem. Yeah, and this is a modern day map. I, we didn't print you off an old map where it shows Cush instead of, uh, you know, some of these other regions. But anyways, we just wanted to give you perspective that yeah. uh, he did travel a long way because he, want, he was seeking and he had an open heart and he wanted yeah. to understand the scriptures. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm a map person. I'm like, where's Ethiopia? I mean, where's this guy coming from? Is it close by? Yeah, <laughs> no, no it's it, not. it probably took him quite a long time to get there. Yeah. So now on Philip's side, right, Philip, uh, uh, he was kind of just available to, to make this life-changing moment happen for the eunuch, yeah. right? So he's, he's um, uh, one, available. And he's uh, obedient. He's obedient. First, he's obedient to the angel. The angel said, go down there to Gaza or wherever. And then he says, the Holy Spirit says, now go you know, down to the chariot. Yeah. So he believes both those things. And because he's obedient and shows up, makes himself available, mm -hmm. the transformation happens. Right, yeah. yeah. And then he was very attentive, I guess I would say, to the surroundings. Like he, he, it's like, okay, God, you've sent me here. The Spirit directed me over here. Now what? Oh, ask the question. You know, uh, what, uh, what did he say? Oh, do you understand what you were reading? So he asked the question. And that was what opened the door uh, yeah. because he was attentive. And then mm -hmm. finally, I think that this is huge. He was just willing to hop up in the chariot mm -hmm. and ride along. Right. You know, how many of us, you know, somebody comes and they, they kind of ask maybe a question about a scripture or they, they are wondering about faith in some way and we just miss it because we, we aren't attentive, we're not obedient, you know, mm -hmm. we're just like, I'm busy, hey, I got, a, I got this going on, I got this going on. But like he, like literally whatever else he was doing was let go of and he just hopped in the chariot and accompanying this man i you know mm -hmm. however far it doesn't really it's not really specific on that so that he could be part of this man's journey yeah. in this in this life-changing encounter that he had yeah he may have gone way out of the way but it didn't matter if you caught the last part where he's just transported back to do more ministry somewhere else yeah. <laughs> that is cool yeah I mean, I think, cool. I think that shows something that God is just so faithful. Like when we're obedient like that and when we go um, and, and listen to the Lord and maybe go out of our way, like doesn't God always provide the things we needed anyways? You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, 
Well, that'd be nice if my house just got clean. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud, like, you know, like, I, I, it's like, oh, you know, this needs done, or this person needs help, or this needs minister to, and I do still come home, and the house still is the same. <laughs> that fun. just has not changed. I told you, get a maid. <laughs> <laughs> So now, okay. uh, so now we have people, uh, Ed and Janice, they, they were back east, and they're going to tell this story. And basically, it's somebody saying, oh, isn't things crazy? And instead of saying, yeah, things are crazy, and, and turning their backs, they share. And so Janice, yeah. will you come and share? Yay. Yay. This you is can such, just stand right This here. is such a fun story. Yeah, stand by Alicia. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, those online. Yes. Uh, when Ed and I got married nine years ago, I gained two more sons, so I now have three sons. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing that you can take to heaven. You can't take your money, you can't take your cars, you can't take your house, but you can take your kids. Yeah. Ed and I uh, went to Tennessee, visited with, for four nights with the youngest son before we went and stayed with the older son. But while we were staying with the younger son, Brandon and his wife, Morgan, um, we talked about things, you know, because you do talk about things, and the boys are getting to know their dad because the, their mom had moved them back to Tennessee many years ago when they really needed a dad. So now they have a dad, mm -hmm. and dad and I were there, and we talked about how crazy everything is because life is crazy right now. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly how we got on to spiritual things except... We said, yes, there's a spiritual warfare going on. And Ed kept pressing, you know, do you know Jesus? And Morgan's like, well, I pray. And, well, do you know Jesus? And Brandon, do you know Jesus? Do you have Jesus in your heart? Well, we pray. <laughs> well, it has to be more than just you pray and you believe in God. Because Brandon's like, well, I believe in God. Well, even the devil believes in God, folks. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's more than <laughs> just on. believing in God. Yeah. And if... So they decided, yes, they wanted to pray to receive Jesus in their lives. Mm. And if any of you are concerned that you don't know, oh, gee, I don't know what to pray, you don't have to have pray a specific prayer. Mm -hmm. And it, everybody's got their phone now, so if you want to have a prayer that you can read and have them repeat after you, you can actually go online and look up a sinner's prayer. Just Google it. Yeah, just Google it. It's real easy, you know. So it's not hard to do. And we had the privilege and the honor mm. to lead Brandon and Morgan to the Lord yeah. and mm -hmm. help them get connected. I gave them three different churches in their area. They can mm. look online because everyone has online now. So you can yeah. check out churches and see if they fit what you need. Yeah. So That's we good. are so excited. Mm -hmm. If you think of Brandon and Morgan, then pray for them. They're new believers. Uh, Morgan's already had a, a Mormon contact her, and she asked me about it. Teresa, you'll love this. <laughs> and I said, no, you want to go with a Bible-believing church, and they have some differences between what they believe and what's in the Bible. Mm. So those of you online, mm. Pray for Brandon and Morgan, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. just Good. when God gives you an opportunity, you need to step in. So we hopped on the chariot with Brandon and Morgan. <laughs> Yay. Amen. Yay. Woo. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So they were ava available. They were obedient. They were attentive. Like they just saw this opportunity and they hopped mm -hmm. on the chariot. So, yeah. you know, I just think that's what God is calling us to do in this moment. Like I imagine Philip, you know, I, I, I mean, kind of almost like, hey, okay, God, what are we doing today? You know, how, <laughs> wh where do you need me? Where do you want me? He was doing his God time, I think. Yeah. And then the Spirit spoke to him. Right? The like, angel showed up. Yeah, he just, <laughs> he just starts doing it. Like, like almost, I mean, I almost feel like uh, without, you know, being disrespectful or anything, like he was just kind of clueless to, you know, what? any of, of what's going on, but he was, he was very, not very clueless, I mean, to the spirit and to the move of God, and God just kind of put him right where he needed to be, and so, mm -hmm. like, we don't want to be, you know, these clueless people, we want to be attentive mm -hmm. to how God might be moving in this moment, and so that's a, that's a super fun story. Um, so we want to make this clear, the eunuch 
uh, there were some things on his side that, that caused this transformation and this life-changing moment, right? He was already, he had an open heart. He was mm -hmm. seeking in some way. Mm -hmm. He was trying to understand mm -hmm. scripture. He was willing to have someone help him. Yeah. You know, that's huge mm -hmm. uh, if you're just willing to have someone help you. Yeah. So we want to move into this time uh, today, you know, as we talk about these life-changing moments, uh, you know, we feel like there's probably some people that have come to church that are desperate for uh, like a life-changing moment. And that starts, number one, with, you know, just accepting Jesus into your heart. So if you don't already know Jesus, that's the, that, that's the very beginning. Or if you've not read the book, uh, no, it's the bestseller you, in all the world. You should read this book, the Bible. Um, but that people are, are wanting these life-changing transformations. They're desiring that in the depths of their core. Yeah. And, and part of that is, you know, our part is saying, yeah, I do need help. I could use prayer. I, do, I don't understand what I'm reading or I am struggling with this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, taking... Uh, that uh, initiative to say, I need help. Yeah. Taking ownership of the situation you're in and say, I need to change. Yeah. And so what does it take? Does it take counseling? Does it take, you know, a sozo or a deliverance? Does it just take stepping out and asking for prayer? Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. know, there's yeah. so many ways to, to get help. Yeah. And sometimes just the first pray, the, just the first initial uh, saying that I need help in this area mm -hmm. and I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to help me mm. and give me, you know, wisdom in how to get help in these different areas starts kind of the snowball of the, the, the yeah. transformation and the effect that lasts. Um, and I also felt like there's, you know, probably just people that are stuck. Like last night as we were ministering, we had a number of people that just are like stuck in their circumstance, stuck where they're at. You mm -hmm. know, this is a, t a season with COVID and, and people having to isolate. There's a lot of people that are just have really gotten stuck. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't want us in stuck places. He's always calling us. And he, there's always room to minister. There's always, uh, uh, he always has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so if you're feeling stuck, I mean, that would be a place where you say, okay, I am feeling stuck. I need help getting unstuck. Yeah. Right? I got prayer last night. I just kind of felt stuck in my routine. It just... Stuck in your routine. Especially in wintertime, it's not very... I just feel trapped, you know, and I need to get out more. And so I got prayer, and it was good. I felt like some new ideas. And yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some heaviness lift. Mm, good. Yeah. yeah. So we have these response cards mm. on the seat. So if you guys could track some down, if anybody needs they, some. They look like uh, this. Matt, will you pass like those extra ones out? Yeah. And uh, we're just going to take a moment now and have you fill these out. And we're going to have the worship come team out. come up and just yeah. uh, play some music while we do this. Yeah, we really felt today, we don't always do this, but every now and then um, <clears throat> we'll just give you some instruction here what these are, you know, some, these are always, <clears throat> excuse me, in the pew backs or whatever, but uh, today we, you don't have to put your name on it, if, if uh, that's totally up to you, but if you have a new address or a new email, we'd love to know that. Um, It'd be good if they put their name on, but. Yeah, okay. what, whatever, um, but anyways, the, the, on the back of this, it says life-changing moment, and if there's a place where you you need a life-changing moment. We'd love to have you write it down so we could be praying for that for you, that, that you know, you're stuck in this, in this place, um, you're frustrated, you're tired, uh, you, you, know, you have some physical something that's just really hindering you, a marriage issue, a relationship issue, like you need some, you need a miracle in that area. You need a life-changing encounter with the Lord. You know, we want you actually to write that down um, because we're in just a moment, we're going to actually have you bring it up here and just lay it at the cross. Um, if you can't think of one and you just want to share a life-changing moment that you've already experienced in your life, uh, a time God spoke to you, ministered to you, an encounter that you had, then write that down. Um, and then, of course, there's a place here that says, today I'm choosing to become a follower of Jesus because that's a life-changing moment. I'm choosing to recommit my life to Jesus like maybe you've drifted and become a little warm, uh, but you want to be hot again. 
love that. Or you're going to respond to today's message by reaching out to someone for help. Like maybe there's someone you're supposed to get help from to encourage you, disciple you, uh, just help you understand scripture. Or you're going to ask someone for prayer. Like you're going to literally call, come down. You're going to say, I need prayer because I, I, I'm stuck. I need a transformation. So those are the, the couple things. And of course, you can do a prayer request if you need one. Um, but as you're filling this out, they're going to sing this Tim song. Tim Sherry, come down. We're going we're gonna to go into this prayer time as you fill these cards out. And we're going to have people available for prayer even right now yeah. during these next two songs. Yeah, so to the right. You can come and give somebody your card and say, I need prayer right now. But literally, when, when you're done with your card, we want every person to just come and bring it and lay it at the foot of the cross. Because you're saying, Jesus, I need help. Jesus, I need a, I need a moment of some transformation. Okay, does that make sense? And then we'll do these two songs and then we'll dismiss.